Five seconds to go. Start. It is relevant to mention at the outset that after the decision of this court in Tarachand versus Union of India and another, the Parliament amended Section 45 of the 2002 Act, wide Act 13 of 2018, so as to remove the defect noted in the said decision and to revive the effect of twin conditions specified in Section 45 to offences under the 2002 Act. This amendment came to be challenged before different high courts including this court by way of writ petitions. In some cases, where relief of bail was prayed, the efficacy of amended section 45 of the 2002 Act was put in issue and answered by the concerned High Court. Those decisions have been assailed before this court and the same is forming part of this batch of cases. At the same time, separate writ petitions have been filed to challenge several other provisions of the 2002 Act and all those cases have been tagged and heard together as overlapping issues have been raised by the parties. We have various other civil and criminal writ petitions, appeals, special leave petitions, transferred petitions and transferred cases before us raising similar questions of law pertaining to constitutional validity and interpretation of certain provisions of the other statutes including the Customs Act 1962, the Central Goods and Services Tax Act 2017, the Companies Act 2013, the Prevention of Corruption Act 1988, the Indian Penal Code 1860 and the Code of Criminal Procedure 1973 which are also under challenge. However, we are confining ourselves only with the challenge to the provisions of PMLA. As aforementioned, besides challenge to constitutional validity and interpretation of provisions under the PMLA, there are special new petitions filed against various orders of high courts, subordinate courts across the country whereby prayer for grant of bail, quashing discharge stood rejected as also special new petitions concerned with issues other than constitutional validity and interpretation. Union of India has also filed appeals, special new petitions and there are few transfer petitions filed under Article 139A1 of the Constitution of India. Instead of dealing with facts and issues in each case, we will be confining ourselves to examining the challenge to the relevant provisions of PMLA being question of law raised by parties. Mr. Kapil Sibbal, Learned Senior Counsel, appearing for the private parties petitioners in the concerned matters, submitted that the procedure followed by the ED in registering the enforcement case information report is opaque, arbitrary and violative of the constitutional rights of an accused. It was submitted that the procedure being followed under the PMLA is draconian as it violates the basic tenets of the criminal justice system and the rights enshrined in Part 3 of the Constitution of India, in particular Articles 14, 20 and 21 thereof. A question was raised as to what, whether there can be a procedure in law where penal proceedings can be started against an individual without informing him of the charges. It was contended that as per present situation, the ED can arrest an individual on the basis of an ECIR without informing him of its contents, which is per se arbitrary and violative of the constitutional rights of an accused. Stop.